Thank God it's Friday. Amen. Let's start this uh, TGIF with prayer. Father, we are complete in you. Father, law does not complete us, so let us not be deceived by the false teaching. But Father, stand firm on your words today. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, sorry about the mess. I still have to clean my room. <laughs> um, really got into this book. I think it's like 1,200 pages. A book that stand on its own. Wow. I'll be doing a book talk on that in a few weeks. Um, let's talk about Colossians chapter 2. 10 through 15. I'm just going to read it once through using many different translations. And you have been made complete in Christ, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you are circumcised with spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of flesh in the circumcision of Christ. You are buried with him in baptism, in which you are also raised with him through faith in power of God and raised him from the dead. When you were dead in sins, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled our certificate of death consisting of legal demands which are in force against us and which were hostile to us. And this certificate he has set aside and completely removed by nailing to the cross. He disarmed the rulers of the authority and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them by him. Therefore, let no man judge you. That's the completion. So, basically, law does not complete you. Let no man judge you. Because by keeping the law or not keeping the law, because you are completed in Christ. Christ completes us, not the law. So why do you want to go back to the law as the Judaizers and this legalism? And, and say, Paul is not fighting the members of the satanic church. He's fighting so-called Christians, Christian leaders, false teachers, who penetrate into the church. Um, yeah, so the church, the real enemy is not actually the pagans outside of the church. You need to love them and care for them. And and Satan doesn't do anything for them because, well, they're all hell bound. You know, Satan does not want to aggravate. They're having great time. And then Satan doesn't have to do anything. They just going to do drug, rock and roll and have fun and and ultimately going to hell so let them but wow how do you deceive the ones already in the church out of their faith so that they'll lose their salvation so that's the key satan is supposed saying that listen you are completed in christ you are fully completed uh, and he's the head of everything. And the word complete is the grammatical echo of the word in verse 9, fullness of Godhead. And so let me read that. For in him, Christ, dwell all the fullness of God bodily, and you are completed in him. Because he's the head of all principle and power. Yeah, so that that's the... The danger of dividing the word of God in verses. So then you are locked in by the numbers. And oh, but no, actually it's a echoing. It's called grammatical echo. Echoing. And yeah, I mean, if you have been circumcised by Christ, if you have done, if you've gone through the spiritual circumcision, what the heck? We demand actual circumcision if you have been circumcised by in heart, what's the removing of the, the foreskin of your nunu? It, it, it has no significance. That's what Paul's saying. Okay, 
Jeremiah 4.4. 4. He's picking up from Jeremiah 4.4. 4, because uh, uh, Paul, Apostle Paul is an Old Testament scholar. He didn't have New, New Testament because he's writing the New Testament right now. <laughs> Jeremiah 4.4 4 says, Circumcise yourself to the Lord and remove the foreskin of your hearts, O man of Judah, people of Jerusalem. So he's using that to say that, oh, people of church, what are you doing? We have been removed. Our foreskin of our heart has been removed. Heart. So why? You talk about circumcision of your nunus. So, yeah, that's what he's saying. So Romans 2, 29. No man is Jew because he's only inwardly, and circumcision is matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such man's praise does not come from men, but from God. Paul is very consistent. Uh, his basis is rock solid. He does not change his mind because of the circumstance. He's very principally driven, very driven by the revelation that he has received, driven by the knowledge that he has acquired. Uh, he's being a Jew. He was just adamant about everybody keeping the law of God. Why? Because God gave the law of God, and he believes God is the ultimate. And when he realized Jesus is God, hey, wait a minute, we don't need to be circumcised. And Calvin says, well, it's not even like, oh, you don't need it. No, it's anti-Christ. It's to do that is to, to insist that is to go against Christ. Because if Christ has done it all, there's no need for us to do it again. Why? Because we are buried with him in baptism. We died. And you were raised with him in faith and power of God. He is from the dead. Now, this is something that we use when we baptize people. When, when I was a pastor, I used to take people out to beach, dunk them. And so we, we go into the ocean. So people don't really hear what we are saying. And I would tell, ask two questions. Are you? What is baptism to you? Does this symbolize that when you go down to the water, it means you're going to die with Christ or you are dead? But now when I pull you out of the water, does it going to represent newness of life with Christ? And when you walk out that you're making a commitment, you're going to walk all the days of your life with Christ? Unless they said yes. Well, I'll not baptize them. Don't get baptized. It's like, yeah, it's like baptism is just a symbol. It's like giving a wedding ring to a ceremony. If you know, if you don't want to marry Christ, don't get married. Don't don't receive the ring because, you know, when you receive the ring, suffering begins. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I'm, I like the ceremony, but I don't want to live with him. I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to live with suit. You know, I'm going to live with Linda. I'm going to have sex with, you know, Julie. But yeah, I'm not going to commit it to one. No, then don't get don't get married, right? Just live whatever, you know. But just don't say that you're married to Christ. So baptism represents life and death. And he says, when that happens, you come alive with Christ, right? Wow. God made you alive, quickened quickened now it doesn't because uh, english did away with these uncertainties by saying that god made you come alive but in terms of greek it is a run-on sentence you don't know which is the subject because it just continues on you know having canceled out the certificate come alive and fullness you're completed so uh <laughs> ellicott finally said well it is anomaly, introduce an un grammatically speaking grammatically introduce an anomaly, but such anomalies are now un not uncommon or common in Apostle Paul's writing because passage of highly spiritual teaching. Uh, it's not issue with highly spiritual teaching because I believe that uh, Apostle Paul goes into sort of like Soren Kierkegaard state. He writes in poetry sometimes prose, sometimes description, sometimes rebuke, sometimes prophetic words. So when you mix it all together, you don't really have to follow the grammar. You don't, Grammarly does not define whether your writing is good or not. 
you know, maybe grammatically wrong, but it's Bible. You know, there is a anomalies after anomalies after anomalies in the Bible. And because Bible is not some kind of literature, we cannot critique it. It's so amazing that when I'm doing the transfer, the word of God, uh, the Grammarly picks it out as a wrong grammar. <laughs> Talk about Bible. Yeah, so it's okay. Uh, and so those of you who said, oh, you know, I don't want to write because I'm embarrassed. I'm grammatically challenged and my spelling sucks. I said, well, it's okay. Just write. You know, you're not, you, you don't want to please the Grammarly. Just if that's the message you got from the Lord, it don't have to be right grammatically. Yo, you hear what I'm saying? You know, so just write it. Because why? All that stuff that law demands and it got wiped away, blotted out, obliter obliterated, wiped it, abolished, right? Um, having canceled out the certificate of death consisting of legal demands. What law demands, you know? All the laws that the Old Testament Moses gave, he's saying that it's been canceled out, right? canceled out, blotted out. Uh, in Acts, Paul says, repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped away. When you repent, all the, the requirements wiped away. Ephesians 2.15, by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and decrees. He did this in creating himself, the one man out of two, thus making peace. You don't have to keep the law. The Bible says that, well, because it's been abolished. Um, I guess um, hmm. in a very strange way, let's say that Christian Jesus came uh, as a Korean and and he died and resurrect, and so they start a church. And some satanic-influenced so-called Christian comes to church and says, well, we're Korean, so we need to do uh, ancestral worship, jesa. Unless we do jesa, we cannot be Christian. See, that's the, the kind of argument that Paul's having. Circumcision, are you kidding me? We... We got circumcision of the heart. You're, you're, you want us to go back to the tradition of Jews and demanding that we need to be circumcised in order to be saved? It's sort of like, yeah, it's, it's like uh, glorified nationalism. You know, that, yeah, if you're American, you got to eat hot dog. You know, if you don't eat hot dog, then you can be saved or something stupid like that. So here, Paul is just upset. He is going at it and actually calvin puts it all together and says well it's the victory of christ which he had poured for himself us over satan but is disfigured by the false apostle influenced by satan and there was depraved of the fruit of when they restored ancient ceremonies wow calvin is very extreme you know if he lived today boy he would be in whew, national tv debating this you know, uh, all these crazy people who are trying to normalize craziness, right? Uh, normalize uh, their uh, perverted behavior as normal and demand that everybody else uh, also does, like demanding Muslim to wear L LGBT uh, banner. And if you don't do that, it's against humanity. Wow, you know. If Calvin was alive, he was here being the uh, CNN, you know, blasting, you know. It says that, oh my gosh. And he says, well, Christ has what? Disarmed the rulers and authority. It's despoiled. And he said, the, ju the judgment is upon the world. Now the prince of this world will be cast out. Uh, Jesus says in John that when I come back, all the principalities and all these cronies, the people have authority because they did not recognize God, it will be all cast out, right? First Corinthians, when the end will come, Jesus hands, he hands over, Jesus hands over the kingdom to God 
father after he has destroyed all dominion, authorities, and power. Okay. Uh, the Calvin writes, spoiling principalities. There is no doubt he means devils whom the scripture represent as acting the part of accusing us before God. It's like, devil always come and accuse, accuse, accuse. No. Let no man therefore judge you by what you eat or what you don't eat because law does not complete you. Jesus does. No man judge you based on keeping the law or not keeping the law because you are completed. You are full of it, of the Godhead who is in Christ. Amen to that. Well, be completed in Christ. Don't get completed in every, anything else. You know, we try to complete ourselves in the fun that we have and how much money we have and what kind, how many degrees we have and what kind of wonderful stuff, the toys you have, don't get completed in that. Right? If you do that, then you'll be sort of like, yeah, you see, you want to see my circumcision? You know, it's such a nice job, man. Yeah, come on. It's not physical. It's spiritual. Have the circumcision of your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys tomorrow. Well, see you in book talk tomorrow.